Today on Bureaucrats TV, a different set, a different sidekick, and Valentine's Day candy and beer. Yum. Hi, I'm Paulette, and this is not Eric. No, it's not. <laughs> and we're not in our usual Bureaucrats TV studio. That's a lot more obvious. Yes. Uh, the reason for that is because tomorrow's Valentine's Day, and we're talking beer and chocolate, and my brother hates chocolate. Weirdo. So, he's not here. Good. Producer Ryan stepped in for him today, and we're going to have some fun. A lot of fun. Alright, so on the menu today, we got some recommendations from craftbeer.com, Serious Eats, and some other random Googling, and beer experts, um... Cicerones and the like uh, broke down their favorite beers to pair with particular chocolates. So we have a Doppelbach, we have an IPA, we have a uh, Lambic, which is a Creek Lambic, and then just for shits and giggles, we have the Samuel Smith Chocolate Stout, which we opened during one of our Beer Miss episodes, and it was fantastic so that's pretty much the one if you don't want to consume both candy and beer because you want to save all your calories for beer this is it like this is what you want to drink and as you notice we have a sculpin without air yeah we're actually going to drink a sculpin without him i mean in honor of him yeah because that's, that's what it is yeah that's what it is what candy are we eating today chocolate uh-huh we've got Lots of chocolate. we've got your typical Valentine's candy assorted chocolate. We also got some chocolate with raspberries. Chocolate. Some cho yes, this is fancy. This was a gift from my secret Valentine. Ooh. I know. I, I, I participated in a secret Valentine exchange on Instagram and I got a bunch of chocolate. Got some sea salt and almond. Oh yeah. So we're going to see which Reese's. mix and match best. Um, usually for chocolate, you're going to see a lot of stout recommendations. Of course because that pulls out those coffee and chocolate notes. Um, we did pull out a stout, which is already tasting like chocolate, but we thought since that's the obvious choice, let's go for some other recommendations that are a little less well-known, especially if you're like me and don't like stouts. Do you like stouts? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're good. I mean, that one. more they're for him. That, that's a delicious one. That's not your typical proto-stout, though. That's more of like a, hey. I like coffee, though. Yeah, we've already discussed how I don't. But anyway, let's drink. Yeah, I'm really interested in what the, goes well with the IPA. Because uh, that doesn't seem like anything would. Right, because more the hops. bitterness. But dark chocolate is also bitter. But a lot of these are cut with, well, that one's got almonds in it. This one has raspberries in it. So some sugary notes. So we'll see. So our first beer is the Wiehenstaffener Corbinian. And this was actually a recommendation in this book, On Beer and Food, which is an actual beer pairing book that Ryan got me for Christmas. He sounds like a great guy. He's you. I know. <laughs> so it's a Doppelbach from Germany, and it's brewed under the German purity law, which states you can only use water, hops, and yeast. Correct? Originally, no, water, hops, and malts. Yeah. Yeast was added later. And that was um, back at a time when people were sticking all kinds of things in their beer uh, like ox blood and chicken shit. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Germany instituted a purity law and yet still managed to make all kinds of fantastic beers within those strict boundaries. Now, the book says that this can go with all kinds of barbecued and strongly seasoned meats, but also because of the chocolate notes within it, that it'll pair well with a variety of chocolates and berries. So we've got our raspberry chocolate here. I'm just going to taste yeah, it. Yeah, taste it first. Like. Ooh, oh, yeah. And you can mm. smell the alcohol. How much is this one? It's 7.4. Oh, my? Surprisingly. It's a very malt-forward beer. Oh, yeah. You're not going to get a lot of uh, bitterness uh, from from the hops that are in it. Um, it's definitely letting the malts do all <laughs> of the talking, and that's why you're getting such a uh, sweet aroma yeah. from it. So let's see how it pairs with this raspberry chocolate. This is a dark chocolate, 55%. Yeah, the chocolate's good. Mmm. 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 Mm-hmm. All right. 
Shout out to Leia, my, uh, or Leah, my secret Valentine exchange body because that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It really does go well. Oh, yeah. All right, so here's your dessert pairing right here. That is really good. That is really good. Should we try it with a milk chocolate? I'm going to do one of these sea salt and almond one. Oh, I'll try that too. Because, you know, why not? For yeah. for the sake of... I have to cleanse my palate. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think she likes it. Oh my god, Eric would have hated every minute of this. <laughs> yeah, that goes well too. But they're both dark chocolates. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try a milk chocolate. I'm gonna take so we got this Russell Stover's candy heart. And it doesn't tell you what's in it. You wanna split this one with yeah, me? Let's see what it is. Ah, it's so strong. It looks like it has some almonds and nougat in it. Nougat. Nougat. What is nougat? Ten nougat. It's like pre-peanut or something. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, this beer is a winner. It's going to go with all chocolates. Oh man, we don't have any white chocolate, do we? No. Okay, well, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this beer pairs with all colors of chocolate. Dark milk and white. It doesn't discriminate. It does not. It's a, that's a good way to put it. The producer here coming in with the one-liners. All right. So our next beer is one I'm super excited about because it's a sour and it's a Belgian sour at that. It's one of the older types of beers brewed in Belgium in Brussels specifically because it's a spontaneously fermented uh, beer, a lambic that, uh, Brussels has a special like yeast floating in the air or something, you know, just bacteria floating in the air that make for a distinct flavor of beer. I'm calling it yum yeast. <laughs> it's yummy. It makes the best beer. And uh, the creek refers to the cherries that are added to it. So the use of cherries, I, um, I believe, predates the use of hops in Crazy. beer. So we're talking very old school style of beer. It is super red. Um, and crazy. just smells fantastic. Almost amber, that's how red it is. Okay. If you are not prepared for the amount of cherry that is going to hit your tongue, yeah. you might be a little shocked. Um, the first time I had a similar beer, uh, it almost tasted medicinal to me. So, you know, you kind of have to prepare your palate for something like this. Chocolate. We're going to taste it with some dark chocolate, which it would pair very well with because the cherry, the acidity in the cherry kind of cuts back on that cacao fat. It's a good fat. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Mm. Mm. These aren't super alcoholic beers either, right? What was this one? I don't think it actually says, which legally I think it has to. But, um, I don't know. Probably not if it's a really old style of beer. Don't seem not to be as alcoholic. Yeah. They're, they're more about the flavor they brewed, profile. They brewed it just to have clean water. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. We've talked about it many times about how, you know, people drank beer because they couldn't drink water and boiled water with hops and yeast added to it, or in this case, cherries is a hell of a lot better than just plain boiled water. Um, let's actually look it up yeah, and no, see really if we can find it in untapped. This show is supported by Untapped. <laughs> no, well, yeah. we support it. Uh, it's three and a half percent, so super low, super easy drinking. Like this is a session beer for sure. That's why it comes oh, in such a big bottle. Coconut. Oh, I'll eat that. I love coconut. Ryan hates coconut. <laughs> well, especially with chocolate. Mm. Chocolate's so good. I don't know what you're talking about. Mmm. Mmm. That was so good. It was a terrible experience. So good. I don't know what you're talking about. Drink more of your beer. It'll wash down the flavor. All right, I'm going to try it with this raspberry that we have here. So raspberry and cherries, you see those paired with both chocolate and beer a lot. I'm going back to good chocolate. <laughs> mm. I take back what I said about none of this chocolate being as good as Belgian chocolate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I can believe the words that are coming out of your mouth. It might be because 
we haven't had real Belgian chocolate in so long that I just want this to taste that good. But it actually is a really delicious chocolate. It's a very good pairing for sure. The chocolate's fantastic. The beer is fantastic. I could drink this all day. And you literally could. Because <laughs> it's only three and a half percent. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm gonna want some more. We're gonna take a little break so we can finish this bottle and then we'll be back. Next up is our irony choice, because Eric's not here to enjoy it. So we will, or try to at least. Um so the pairing resource, and I don't know if it was Serious Eats or craftbeer.com that suggested this, because um, most beer pairing uh, resources that I read said don't drink an IPA with chocolate. Just don't drink IPA. <laughs> and the reason for that was because the bitterness in the hops and the bitterness in dark chocolate especially would overwhelm the palate. But yeah. this particular one said to try chocolate with heat. So we actually rimmed our glasses with some chili salt because we couldn't find any actual like chili chocolate, which is kind of interesting here in Los Angeles. But you know, we're gonna try it, see what happens. Let's use, let's let's try it with the salty dark. We could have done like a habanero sculpture. We could have done a habanero that sculpture. Would have been interesting. Doesn't <laughs> Dallas White Bakery? Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try it first. Mm. Got all that spiciness that we added. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The smell complements the beer, mm -hmm. if nothing else. Oh yeah, whoever recommended this was not kidding around. Mm -hmm. This is actually a really good combination. So I am going to venture to guess that an IPA pairs well with Mexican food, period. Because you know your your spice level is usually a little higher there. Need, oh, Thai we food. To, we need to proof this. We should do a Thai food pairing. Experiment. Mm -hmm. Well, this is really good, and you know, you know, you viewers who've been here for more than one episode know that I hate IPAs because I basically mention that every single time. Yes, yes, you do. Um, says the producer who is, has been here since day one. Um, but you know, my New Year's resolution is to try more, and see if that helps improve my attitude towards them. What did you just give me? I have no idea. Chocolate. <laughs> give me chocolate. Mm. Mm. It's pretty good though, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow, that was really good. That really elevated the IPA. We were talking about spiciness in beer, and if something is too spicy, a beer is not going to quell that yeah, heat. Yeah, especially in So, IPA. yeah, yeah, because alcohol will actually increase the spiciness, and that's probably what's happening here, that the um, you're actually tasting more of the spice because of the beer. Um, so, you know, be careful with how much spice you're having with totally. this. Like, but don't, it, don't line it with, like... Habanero <laughs> or scotch bonnets or ghost peppers. Mmm. It is so good. So good. So, yeah. Um, so, for those of you viewers who don't really care for IPAs, you just, you don't like bitterness. You have to pair with the right thing. Uh, yes. Cheese. Cheese. We did chocolate. a pizza and IPAs episode. Um, that worked out really well because, again, that fattiness in the cheese, like in the chocolate, is helping cut through the bitterness. But even a little bit of spicy saltiness is um, is working out really well. They're all pairing really nicely. Yeah. So if you're looking for something to do tomorrow night, uh, and it includes chocolate, spiciness, and beer, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there, there's, there's your plan for tomorrow. Yeah. You're hey, welcome. You're welcome. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> and our last option is the Samuel Smith Chocolate Stout, because stouts will go well with chocolate, mm. period. Um, but this particular stout, and again, I'm not a super big fan of them. We had this one uh, in our Beer Mess Beer Advent box, which you can I'll link the episode up there, down there somewhere. Uh, this actually tastes like chocolate milk <laughs> with alcohol in it. Like, it is so, so delicious. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to break open your stash of chocolate or you don't want to go out and get chocolate but still want that chocolate flavor, that is a just, damn just good that. option. Yeah. You just want to drink your chocolate. You don't want to eat it. It's the best of both worlds. It's exactly. beer and chocolate all in one. It's chocolate that will get you drunk. And, yeah, it will. This was not a low ABV, right? I hope not. 
<laughs> it's five percent actually. It's still a session beer, so you can have a couple. Um, you know, don't don't waste your calories on the chocolate food. Just save it for the beer. Yeah, maybe we live in a place that doesn't have good chocolate. Like maybe you should drink that. America. Yeah. It's not Belgian chocolate. Um, so yeah, we're not actually going to break this open because we have a ton of chocolate still to eat. Plus, you can already watch our old beer of us video to to see our tasting notes on that one. I might but open it. It's uh highly highly recommended. On this very special Valentine's Day episode of Bureaucrats TV, we had Ryan filling in for Eric, and we had these three beers. It was everything we loved. Each other, beers, chocolate. Pretty much. I mean, not that we don't love Eric, because we do. I mean, he's cool. But he doesn't love chocolate, so fuck him. So we had a German Doppelbach, we had a Belgian Lambic, we had an American IPA, and we also suggested a English chocolate stout because stouts will always pair with candy um, especially chocolate and this one allows you to just have your chocolate in beer form you instead say you of have your cake and eat it too pretty much uh, have your chocolate and drink it yeah I mean what was your favorite I have to go with the Greek that's just that's not overall... surprising because we're both huge fans of Belgian beer what about you uh I'm actually gonna say the Doppelbach that because was really yeah, I don't actually have much of a sweet tooth. Like, I, I like chocolate, but I it's I don't crave it. I usually prefer sour or savory things, but this was a, a such a beautifully fantastic, flavorful pairing that I'm, I'm actually going to choose the double pop. It actually makes me like the chocolate more. Um, so, yeah, winners. And the IPA was interesting. The IPA was... It surprised was, me how well I think it, it surprised both of us yeah. because... Especially with the, the chili salt that we used, that, was really that really elevated the, the milk flavor. Chocolate. Kind yeah. of cut through that bitterness. Um, so, yeah, definitely agree with the person who said try it with some heat because that was a fantastic parent. Like, I don't, there was no bad moves here except yeah. when you bit into the coconut. <laughs> yeah. Cut that out. So, um, that's it from us here at Bureaucrats. We're wishing you a happy Valentine's Day. Um, hopefully you can steal your kids' candy if you have kids, or you can just wait until the day after yeah. and uh, get it at like a 50% discount so you can have your beer and chocolate too. Better beer. Better beer. Um, so catch us on the interwebs. Where are we? We are Bureaucrats TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yep. Um, you can usually find Eric sitting here next to me, and he's Eric underscore Fontanez on Instagram, and that's Eric. Okay. Or he's Lord Fonz with two Z's <laughs> on Twitter. We it's have like pizza. <laughs> yeah. Pizza has two Z's. We have Ryan Arado sitting in for Eric today, and he can be found on Twitter, Instagram mm -hmm. as the, Ryan Arado. I'm P Font, also in all those places. Uh, and we hope to see you next time. In the meantime, let us know down below how you feel about Valentine's Day. Do you think it's a bullshit holiday? I mean, you don't get it off of work, so it's not really a holiday. What about other uh, beer and dessert pairings that you yeah. like? Yeah, let us know how you feel about beer and dessert pairings. Maybe we'll do that on a future episode. Um, and then like, share, and subscribe. Everywhere. Everywhere. We will catch you next time here at the Bureaucracy. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, Beercrats. Need more bureaucracy in your life? Here are two more episodes that you should check out.